Hi everyone and welcome to our video on drama characteristics. Make sure you have your video visa on the left side ready to go so you can use it to reflect on what you learned and that you have your note taker on the right. Make sure you're following along and using the video to write your notes accurately. Pause the video to give you time to write and make sure you use your best handwriting. And I do suggest to rewatch the video at least once just to make sure you didn't miss anything while you were pausing it to get your notes down. So we're talking about drama. First, we're going to define what is it, and then we're going to talk about some of the elements of drama and what is used in a play um, whenever it's being performed. So first, drama is a story written and portrayed through dialogue and action in the form of a script. So anytime that you are seeing drama, another word for that is a play, right? Um, you will have a script that will give you the dialogue and the action of the story, describing everything that's happening, the characters, all of that. Okay, we're going to go over those parts um, right after this. So make sure you have that written up at the top. So the elements of a drama, you have certain tools that are used in plays that are, the, that are kind of unique to that kind of story. For example, the props, the costumes, the lighting, music, sound effects, etc., that are used to perform the play and bring it to life. For example, here you can see that these girls are putting on a play and you see that they have costumes on. You see that behind them, there's the setting, those little houses, you have the fountain, um, the girl has a basket in her hand. All of those things are tools that are, are meant to bring the play to life. The story is told through the dialogue, but also through the visuals, right? Everything that you see on the stage helps you um, make sense of the story. Then you have the cast. This is the list of characters that make up the play. It usually includes at least one narrator, and it does say at least, so it can have several, and it doesn't necessarily have to have a narrator, but a lot of plays do. Um, these are the people that are putting the play together, and at the beginning of a script, you usually see a list of the cast. It tells you who um, the characters are so that you know how many actors you're going to need um, to put on the actual play you have the plot. This is a story. So it has a sequence of, sequence of events that make it up. It has a problem. It has a solution. It has a climax. It has all of that. So this is just an example of a plot diagram. Um, the same way you can put a, a regular fictional story on a plot diagram, you can do the same for a play because that's what it is. It's a story. It's just told through the dialogue and the action. Then that brings us to the dialogue. These are the lines that are spoken by the characters. This is the main way that the plot is developed in the story. There is some action, and we'll talk about that in a bit too, but the dialogue is the main piece that drives the story. So in a play, you usually have the script that looks like this, and all of this part right here is the dialogue. You have what the, uh, the characters are actually saying, and that's how the story is shown. Then you have character tags. This is the part of the script that says which character is speaking the line. And it's really important so that the actors know what they're supposed to say and it doesn't get confused. This is the part of the script that shows the character tags. It tells you who is speaking, who is saying what, whose turn it is, um, and all of that. Then you have the stage directions. This is the part that's important for the action. These are written directions on the script that tell the actors when to enter or exit, where to move, what to do, etc. A lot of the times when actors are putting on the play, you can add a little bit of your own action, but um, a good playwright will include that action in there already, tell you what to do so that the play comes to life accurately. In a script, it'll look something like this. Sometimes they're in italics, sometimes they're off to the side, but it'll usually be separate. And you notice that there's no character tag next to this part, meaning this is not a part that anybody is saying. It's just instructions. And you'll see it says here, Josiah and the others clear the chair leaving the table as store counter. Josiah exits stage right as the tailors enter and stand on one side of the counter, Abe on the other. It's telling the actors where to stand, what to do, where to exit, where to enter um, to help manage the, the stage and the play. Then we have scenes. These are sections of a play that are similar to chapters in a book. Scenes usually change when the setting changes. Um, 
Here we have an example of what it would look like on a script. It says up at the top, scene one, and you'll notice it has the stage directions, the dialogue, and the character tags. Um, the scenes kind of separate the story into parts. And then you have acts, which is the grouping of several of those scenes that go together. This is an example of a plot diagram with three acts, um, and it shows you those are different sections of, of the play, and not all plays will have this. It really depends on the length of the play and how the story is structured to see if these acts and the scenes are even necessary. So you should have your note taker already uh, filled out by now with the definition of drama and the elements of drama. Remember that these are plays that you, if you're reading it as just a reader instead of an actor, you're probably going to read the whole play by yourself, right? So it's important to know what those character tags are so that you can visualize when one character is speaking versus another. Um, the stage directions are important to help you visualize what is happening in the story. But these are also really fun to actually act out. So if you get the chance to get a group of people together to act out a play, that's always fun. Remember to have your notes um, accurately completed. Make sure that everything you're writing down is correct, which is why you need to follow along with the video. Make sure you complete your visa to reflect on the video. Post your part A, the ask a question in Google Classroom or wherever else your teacher has asked you to do that and be ready to discuss the video and apply the skills. You'll be able to analyze um, a play and identify the different parts of it once you're familiar with them. Once you have that, then you're good to go.